Uh, today I'm just going to share on two turning points, I think, in my life that saw me where I was today. Um, and I hope you'll be able to get something out of it today. Um, I will start as an 18-year-old self. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so after I completed my metric, I decided to go and study graphic design and multimedia, but mostly because I was shy and I thought that's the easiest way out. Um, I'm going to sit behind a desk with my computer and I didn't have to deal with having to see people at all. So with the help of my grandfather who took us through school, I did my three years in graphic design and multimedia. Come third year, uh, something just happened. I, I just completely lost it. I uh, was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder stemming from being a perfectionist. But as a graphic designer, what I found is that at school, most of the time, if your work wasn't up to scratch, you, you faced so much um, disappointment, so that affected that. So my final semester, I actually didn't go to school at all. So come results, my grandparents wanting to find out, so how did you do? And then I had to now start explaining to them that actually this final semester, I stayed at my flat and didn't do any schoolwork. Uh, thank God I'm still alive today uh, because <laughs> they didn't kill me. <laughs> um, so through this journey, now the next best thing was to find work. Uh, I had to go work because I had used up my education fund and I found a job as a student worker. You know when you go to universities and you see students, they usually use students wearing bibs that say, um, ask me. I, I was one of those. I was an ask me at UNISA. But because I knew my situation, I worked so hard. I, I pushed. I knew I didn't have a qualification. I was only now starting to study at that point. Worked so hard that by the time I decided to leave corporate and a career in 2012, I was actually the registrar of Mill Park Business School. Um, without a qualification still, I was still pursuing that. Um, and it speaks to knowing that there's something that you're supposed to be doing and you're pushing so hard to find that contentment, I think, and a sense of responsibility to, towards work. I, I just had this great sense of responsibility because my situation wasn't necessarily the same as um, everyone else. So fast forward to 2012, I decided to, to quit um, corporate and pursue my ultimate dream. I founded, oops, I founded Iliju, a bee farm that's based in rural Winterfeld. Um, how that came about, my grandfather at the time was 87 suggested that we actually go for a course in bee farming because what happened is that we were staying on a farm um, and bees would usually cave in the ceiling. They would settle in our ceiling at home and produce so much honey that the ceiling would actually cave in. Um, so he suggested instead of us actually getting rid of the, of the bees, he suggested, well, let's go for a course in bee farming. So he took all the grandchildren, off we went to to class, attended this course in bee farming. I loved it so much, stayed on, and actually completed uh, my advanced course in, in bee farming. That's how I qualified as a, as a bee farmer. Um, initially, I, I saw that as just simply a way of making money. I mean, I had decided to resign from my work, and here was an opportunity. In South Africa, we had a shortage of honey, and across the world, bees were endangered. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to make a whole lot of money. I'm going into bee farming. Lo and behold, nature had other plans because my passion is really rural development, just improving communities. And that in itself, I found to be the answer to do that because what we ended up doing is that we started assisting rural farmers with bee pollination within the Winterfeld area. So basically to just try and assist them, make sure that they had improved crops 
and the quality of their yields was improved based on this model at no cost. We started doing that, but we benefited because we would place our hives on their farms so that they get bee pollination, and in return, we did hive inspections in order to get the honey from that. Um, I came across this saying that talks about purpose. Um, you attract good opportunities when your heart is in the right place. And I, I love telling a story of a woman called Nora Tega because... What happened is that when we started our bee farm, this woman we met, she didn't know me at all. She said, I like you so much, I'll pay you a salary to keep you in your business. Um, for a good year, this old lady was just putting money in our business, not seeing any returns, nothing was happening at the time. Yes, it was doing well, and all these other people are actually influencers in our, in our business because the heart was in the right place, and we were wanting to actually make a difference in other people's lives that all these great opportunities came our way. Richard Branson loved the project, um, that they have supported it from the on start. Um, so this is where we actually are humble beginnings. That's me with the first 60 hives that we received from Nora Tega and some of the guys that we work with in the community. Um, one lesson that I think I've picked up is that with all the hard work, at some point, one needs to take time out, relax, regroup, which is something for a while that we, I completely failed to do until we lost everything. So it was a good Two, almost two years that we started the business, everything was going well. Unfortunately, we, we lost it all, everything at the, at the same time. Um, Ashraf mentioned that we moved to the, to the farm. We actually, I was working on this project while staying in Johannesburg. But because we, we took such a financial beating that we, we actually had to leave our house in Johannesburg with my husband, and moved to, to Winterfeld. We got a plot, moved into this one, one room house for a good year while we were trying to pick, a, pick ourselves up. Um, new beginnings with that, uh, I think it's important uh, for everyone that as you face life's challenges, you able to see beyond uh, be able to reinvent yourself, and that's what we that's what we did with the bit of money that was left, all our life savings. We bought a ten hectare plot in Winterfeld, and this is where we actually built the one room house that we stayed in for a year. And it didn't exactly help the fact that I was pregnant at the time in this place that was in the middle of nowhere. But we moved anyway, and what we did with the farm is that. We still had our main apiary site. It's a citrus farm. We had vegetables on the farm. And one project that I was involved in was uh, Chiladido, um, which is in my profile, where we planted chili, made chili sauce. So these are some of the things that I have been involved in and what we did with the farm. Up until recently, we developed what we call the village market. We were trying to assist rural farmers, but what then we picked up is that, yes, we were helping them with bee pollination, but they now said, yes, you're helping us with this, but we have a challenge because we don't have access to markets, and how can you help us with that? And we developed what we call the village market, whereby we bring all these village projects, produce, everyone together, and actually create a space that it's, ideal for anyone to come in, spend a day in a rural community and enjoy what's there to offer within these, these communities. Some of the things that we offer, good living, we create gardens in a box, food in a box, um, preserves from the old ladies that actually stay within these rural communities because I found there's so much wisdom within these communities. So what we tend to do, we create social experiences for people to actually go within the community, learn how to make these preserves from the old ladies, um, 
go home and you know how to do it. So you learn at the same time. Uh, crafts is one of the things that we do. Some of the ladies from villages that have actually been, we've been working with a designer and one is an interior designer and our latest project that we're currently working on, it's basically assisting remote villages. Um, what tends to happen in the KZN area is that you find that elephants go into where you find the farmers plant and actually mess up the crops. So what we do is that we now in a project whereby we're creating bee fences along borders just to separate because elephants don't like, don't like bees. Um, I think my lessons, that's our business in a, in a nutshell. But one of the things that I've learned is that it's, it's not about money. My pursuit for happiness has never been about, about money, but making a difference in people's lives and actually running businesses with a heart. Because I found if you run your business with a heart, you attract goodwill and people that you actually work with, the people that you're trying to help, what ends up happening is that they go out there with a positive outlook. They go out there wanting to do good themselves. In return, we, we're creating just this beautiful, beautiful space of opportunities. Uh, affirmations, the only one that I, when I looked at this and wanted to focus on, is that I've, I've learned that all things, they pass away. Um, you might be facing challenges today, but at the end of the day, these things, they all pass away, so it's really about enjoying the moment that you are in, and when you're facing your challenges, you just know that it's, it's really, you're not there to stay. Make it a point that you, you're moving forward. Uh, and in closing, whatever that you, you really, really, really want to do, do it with all your heart. I treasure my family more than anything. I run these projects, but at the end of the day, I know that it's about making a difference and making sure that my family is well taken care of. Uh, that brings me peace, that brings me happiness, and that's the story of our life. Thank you.